what up, what up, what up, y'all? I am your girl, Candy, and to my left, I have Latoya Forever, and we're about to speak on it. <laughs> so we finally, finally, finally got Latoya in the building. Yes, I'm here, and I'm excited-ish. So y'all, I had told her she was banned from speak on it at first because she had stood me up like twice, and I was like, oh, nah, girl, you did. We are not bringing you to speak on it no more, but I changed my mind. I had to have her here because you got, you got way too much to speak about. I have way too much drama in my life, and we need to speak on it. <laughs> How'd I do? Yeah, you did good. Okay, good. I had already heard. I can turn a shade tree into a money tree. <laughs> Okay, so tell me this. Um, overall, how did it feel being one of the new faces of Real Housewives of Atlanta this season? It was like a bittersweet situation because it felt like I'm new to the group and it was kind of intimidating at first because it was a show that I grew up watching mm -hmm. and seeing everyone in real life like you and Kenya and Portia I was like oh my gosh I'm nervous give me a drink but <laughs> it was good because I did build really you know good relationships with everybody mm -hmm. well most people not Drew <laughs> And I need to work on my, you know, friendship with Portia, for sure. You think so? I feel like I didn't really get a chance to connect with her. I think y'all connected I quite mean, nicely. I see LaToya straddling Portia, and they were making out and grinding. <laughs> we connected. <laughs> we seen y'all connecting. If you connected anymore, I just don't know what I think. Yeah, our lips kind of connected. And they were making out. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay, so since we, I mean, I really wasn't planning on going there first, but since we just brought that up. Yeah. Um, the whole um, bachelorette party situation. So everybody knows we really wasn't expecting like, like what we like to call the after party yeah. to be seen on the show. We didn't think that was going to be seen. Yeah. So when you saw them show that clip of y'all kissing, what were you thinking? Listen, I was so shocked, Candy, because I remember like Portia, Tanya, you, you guys were like covering up all the cameras. Can you move that camera? Oh, that it was like a group consensus to just cover the camera. Like taping everything up. Now we're gonna have like the real bachelor party where we can really just forget about what it looks like. <laughs> and making sure, you know, production didn't see anything. Right. So I thought everything was private. Right. Little did I know, you know, we forgot one of the cameras. Yeah. It, in it, the dining room. It was one in the <laughs> dining room. But I, yes, and I was kept trying to figure out now what, and then I realized, oh, damn, damn, we didn't go over there to tape that one, so yeah. But we taped it after the kiss. Yeah, after And it's the like, kiss. they still got it. I'm like, oh my God, mm -hmm. they're sneaky. They are very Or we're, we were just too drunk because <laughs> we missed it. We missed it. <laughs> so y'all got to see the kiss, okay? It was hot, don't even lie. <laughs> Did you enjoy it? Did I enjoy it? Well, first of all, I like, what did Cynthia say? I was being a voyeur that night. <laughs> yeah, you were. You and Cynthia were just chilling on the sofa, just watching everybody with your binoculars on. <laughs> And then Kenya spilled all the tea the next day. And I was like, yeah. what the hell is going on? I thought yeah. this was a private bachelorette party. And here yeah. I am getting called out by all the 80s in the group. Basically, overall, you didn't think they was going to show it. I mean, we all, none of us did. I mean, we didn't even really think they had anything to show. We didn't basically. know. We didn't know that. At all. So, okay. But after they showed it, did you, you know, what did your family have to say? What did, you know... People around you, what, what were you thinking? Everyone was just so shocked. Everyone was like, Latoya, you're this freak. You're out here kissing women. And I'm like, okay, it is what it is, you know? Of course. Like, it is what it is. Because you don't here. care. I don't care. Like, I'm living my best life, you mm -hmm. know? And I had a great time at the bachelorette party. Although I thought it was private, mm -hmm. you know, it was actually on national television. <laughs> and I was okay with that because I'm comfortable in my own skin. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm getting my groove back. I've been in a marriage for over nine years mm -hmm. and I was just having fun. Right. It was all fun. And kissing women is, is fun. Mm. 
Would you like to kiss me? Nothing. <laughs> Hey man, she's rejecting days. me on camera, y'all. Okay. My days of kissing anybody from this cast are long gone. Anyway, I, I feel you on that. Okay, I feel you. Okay, so going back to what I was saying from the beginning, you really made a huge impact on this season, in my opinion. Okay, it was like you just kind of came in like a damn hurricane and just wrecked shop everywhere you went. Like, everywhere you went, you was just leaving people like, ah! Like, what's going on? Okay, so let's start off with your relationship with Kenya. First of all, you came on the show as you was my homie, yeah. but then it was like you and Kenya connected and... It's so crazy because, you know, I came on as your friend. They edited that scene out but because you know Kenny and my relationship was so you know strong and organic and genuine and we like you know vibe we hit it off like at the jump we're both Aquarius we're both going through you know a crazy time you know we're both going through divorces mm -hmm. and I feel like we connected on that mm -hmm. and so that's why they showed more of my relationship with Kenya mm -hmm. at the time I felt like they didn't think we had anything you know in common Right. So they brought me on as actually they were like Candy's friend now turned Kenya's <laughs> friend or something like that. Like you stole, like she stole me from you. Well, basically <laughs> she did because I mean I am the one who knew you before yeah. you came on this show. So, so. how did you feel about that? I mean, I, I thought it was kind of interesting that you guys like connected so quickly and so tight. I was like. Everyone was so shocked about that because they were like, you're not going to get along with Kenya. Well, everybody, uh, people automatically think that, you know, Kenya's not going to necessarily gravitate to anybody. Yeah. You know what I mean? Or yeah. that she's just not going to connect with new people. So they just automatically assume that. Yeah. So it was just kind of shocking when you guys connected on that level. You want to pull my hair on, don't just pull that shit. really like her now here's yeah. the other thing at first it's not like that anymore but at first it seemed like y'all almost had like a friendship that was getting a little cozy <laughs> it got kind of cozy on kenya's part it's just nice to have someone like latoya around to make me feel sexy and vibrant and desirable i feel uh -huh. like you know she's obviously attracted to me I'm attracted to her. <laughs> She's a beautiful woman, you know? Yeah, yeah. I call it how I see it. What do you think her type is? And I feel like after an event that Cynthia had, I believe it was at the wine cellar mm -hmm. event that she had, we went back to Kenya's house. Oh my gosh, so at Kenya's house the other day, uh -huh. and we were, you know, getting kind of close. What was she doing? We didn't do anything physical, but she showed me some of her body parts. <laughs> How do you just start showing somebody your body pose? I feel like she just got so comfortable with me. She just, you know, showed me some of her, you know. Wow. Okay. Well, that's cute. Yeah. But was it like a homegirl to be like, girl, yeah, you know, I'm trying to lose a little weight here, you know. I okay. Know. It was that. But okay. I feel like Kenya kind of had a thing for me, for mm. sure. Mm. Yeah. She kind of had a crush on me. And I felt it. Well, it was uncomfortable at first. But then I was like, hey, it's Kenya. And she's fine as hell. This is very unkidney. Well, <laughs> so why you didn't make a move? Who said I didn't? Oh! Oh! Did you make a move? The cameras weren't there. <laughs> Did you make a move? I see the thing. Oh! <laughs> now it's getting spicy. That's what I'm talking about. Can you? We have a conversation to have later. We'll talk about it later. <laughs> Sorry, Kenya. No, that sounds that sounds like that would have been a fun, hot, spicy night. Yeah, and you would have had your binoculars, you know. I would have been watching. Watching all the action. Definitely would have been watching if there was something to watch. It would have been hot. Mm -hmm. If they would have aired it, but they didn't catch it. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah, that was a, so y'all own time. So, <laughs> moving right along from there. Okay, clearly right off the rip. To me, it felt like you and the other new people on the show were not seeing eye to eye. Okay, so I'm just going to ask you straight up. Like, is it a thing of you felt like, oh, I'm going to be the only new chick that, you know, people checking for this year? Like, what was it? I just feel like 
Are we talking about, you know, when I called out Drew? No, we're gonna start with Fallon because I feel okay. like that was the first night you met Fallon. Um, that was before Drew. Right. Like before you met Drew. Okay. First night you met Fallon, you know, you was taking little digs at her. You, you talked about her husband. Okay, I'm just gonna say one thing. Okay, go ahead. I am a Caribbean girl. Mm -hmm. You know, both sides of my family are from Trinidad. Mm -hmm. We don't have a filter. To an older man. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's something that I need to work on. Toya is Kenya on steroids. Have y'all realized that? Anything that I think comes out of my mouth. Okay. She's a beautiful woman and mm -hmm. she looks like a kept woman. Oh. And so I said, you know, how old is your husband? How old Simon? Got a squad, girl. Simon is 56. Yeah, I, I knew, I knew that. And I knew that because she looks like a man that dates. She, <laughs> a man. <laughs> I don't think she looks like she a man. She looks like a man that dates no. older men. No, no, no. <laughs> I'll just keep it that way. No need to edit it. Uh, no need. No. She looks like a woman that dates older men. She looks like a kept woman. You know, she doesn't really have anything going for herself except her looks. Wait, you just that you summed that up on your first time meeting her? Like yeah. how would you know if she had Most definitely. On? Why did you assume that? Because you look like you date older men with money. Okay, so I feel like she puts on, okay? When we were talking about, you know, donating to your cause, okay. she was like, you know, what's the limit to Cash App? Because I might have to pull out my pocketbook. Did she ever donate to your charity? I donated. No. It was generous, as you, you said. Did. You gave a generous donation. Exactly. Sure. Did she donate anything? No, she didn't. But I mean, just to say, give you know, I didn't really know her that well at that but time. But it doesn't matter. She said not... that. She said that she would. She did not pull out her pocketbook to donate. So don't try to flaunt cash that you don't have. That's not in your own name. Okay. Don't do that. Just keep it real. Keep it funky. Don't try to fake the funk for anybody. That's what I'm saying. She didn't donate. I donated. You did. Yeah. Okay. And she didn't. All right. So moving along. <laughs> moving right along. <laughs> so that were your that was your first thoughts with um, Valen. She looks like a kept woman. Okay. And then with Drew. With three baby daddies. Oh, wait, I thought we was moving on to Drew. Oh, I was just saying that she has three baby daddies. That's you talking about Valen? Yeah. But that wasn't nice. Oh, it's not nice. I mean, it's the reality. The reality of it is she's married, she has three children and three of your daddies. That's all I said. Um <laughs> You know, made me lose my train of thought. I don't even know what to say. I'm just saying <laughs> I would be a cat woman too if all my baby daddies left me for other women and kept me with three kids. You know what I'm saying? I mean, listen, I mean, I myself has been a woman who was a single mom before. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, you know, it, it is what it is. So, it is what it is. You know, everybody don't, is not necessarily yeah. married when right. they have Three kids. children, three baby daddies. It's all good. I guess that's the norm. Is it? I mean, uh, moving on. No. I was just asking a question. <laughs> we moving on. You oh. and Drew. I like Drew. Yeah. I don't you know, think Latoya and her are gonna go long for long. Okay. So you and Drew, what what got y'all on the wrong foot? When she was at Cynthia's place, like the glue was lifting. It was like, human. Her edges were lifting. So you coming for her wig? Yes. I feel like okay. Nothing really got us on the wrong foot. Well, you should be glad. Why? She was coming for you. She came for me? She was. I don't even know her. I was having a conversation with my friend. Okay. And I spoke on her wig, which was trash. <laughs> it is okay. At the time. Okay. Okay, her wigs did upgrade because I did call her out. But her wig wasn't laid right. And that's something that I express to my friend. That is not a wig. That is a pet <laughs> on your head. I thought I was she. And I guess she spoke about that situation with Cynthia. She was talking about her having a cat. A cat? Yes. What's wrong with having a pet cat? She wasn't talking about an animal. <laughs> Cynthia went back and told Drew. No, I thought it was um, Portia. It wasn't Portia the one that said the thing about 
the wig when we were, we stopped, well, I don't know, when we went over to Drew's house. Oh yeah, it was Portia. I am going to tell her everything I know. I'm gonna sing like a goddamn bird. Yeah. Okay, so how did Portia find out? The way Toya dogged this wig, I was expecting to walk in and see her edges chew the f up. I don't remember. It really doesn't matter to me because at the end of the day, Drew's wig was dusty. Okay, it did look like a pet on her head, which is why after we saw the wig and I called it out, we never saw the wig ever again. It was gone. You saw my except until we saw it on this at finale. The, it, on the finale. She brought that beauty supply trash wig. This is actually the hair that Kenya was obsessed with. To the finale as a joke and it wasn't funny because who would wear that on their head? Not even a dog would wear that. Oh, now that head. was hard. That was, okay. that was sound not like that was even, coming from your soul. Not even a dog. Like, geez. Okay, would wear that, okay? Not even baby Aya, my one year old, would wear that in playtime. I couldn't tell what had happened because, okay, let me just say this. Um, when you first had started saying things about Drew's wig, I had not had a chance to see Drew. Like, I hadn't seen Drew in years. Did you see the wig? No, at that time, um, I had not seen that okay. wig. And so it wasn't until I saw tonight's um, episode, or the finale episode, that I realized that that was, a, if it's not the same wig, it's a similar wig. Not only does this not look like a thousand dollar wig, what it looks is familiar. To which I was talking about. Did you think about. it was dusty? I didn't say it was dusty. I'm just wondering. I'm just asking you a You're question. You're dusty. You look dusty. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> and your hair is uneven. No. I'm not saying that the wig was dusty. I mean, I feel like I I, I, I give people grace on their wigs on this show because I feel like all of us went started off one way and then got better as we came along with the looks. You know what I'm saying? So I don't really go too hard on the wigs. Uh, and Drew's not the only person in the group that's had a bad wig day. But for me, I didn't realize that it was a same wig, like, because I didn't meet her with that wig. Right. I only saw that wig the night of the finale, and I was pissed off about the whole wig situation. Right. My reason for being pissed off was because, okay, I was one of the main ones pushing to Cynthia, like, yo, we need to make sure everybody leaves feeling like they get a good gift. Yeah. And so that's why we made her push the money up and tell everybody to give a thousand dollar gift. And so in my mind, I'm like, if I would have ended up with that box, oh, I would have went Living. crazy. Yeah. I would have been mad as hell because you're not finna stick me with this bullshit ass wig Dirty ass, <laughs> and this damn ass, uh, cassette ass tape wig. shit you got going on right now. Yeah. So okay, let's roll back because we just jumped off into that without giving the backstory. So okay, so we know you and Drew. I never had a problem not with besties. Drew. I did not have a problem with Drew. I just called out her fashion because she looks like Halloween every time I see her. I, I just never understand her outfits. I remember the big Frida event, you know, she had on moon boots with like some leather shorts with like a baby doll blouse. And it's like, where do you look at first? It doesn't go together. It doesn't flow together. Her fashion, her style, her look, it's just off to me. And it's like, I would have expected Marlo to say something about her fashion and nobody said anything about it. So I feel so it like- So your job to do it. That's it's my felt. job to call it out. <laughs> Okay. She had on moon boots. <laughs> she she volunteered for the job, basically. That's yeah, what she it, did. It's my new job description. Let me call out everybody's fashion. Drew, your fashion is whack. Oh my god. We okay. need help. Okay. okay. Thank God. Amazing grace. She hired no IG Jeremy. That saved a wretch like me. Some of us in the group need, you know, stylists, and she's one of them. Now we have you, we have Drew, we have, okay, so there's a lot of things. And then I'm going to ask you about this now. I don't know if we're going to put it in our speak of it tonight. We might have to save it for the reunion. But at the reunion, we touch on you. Yeah, that she denied. She straight denied it. Drew has really ran this story about you and her prophet and that you blocked her blessing from happening. So, oh, 
what is the deal with you and the profit? Are you gonna keep it 100 with us? I'm, I always keep it 100. Okay, what was up with the profit? To hide, okay. I met the profit through Drew's assistant, Danny. Mm -hmm. He invited me to, you know, a re revival conference, and that's how I met the profit. We have gotten to be really close with Prophet Lot over the last couple years. And he said that he does you know, one-on-one -on -one coaching sessions, when it comes to spirituality, he's a spiritual advisor, mm -hmm. and I took one of his sessions. Okay. It was like a month and a half long session that I took, mm -hmm. and that was it. And then all these rumors start to circulate. Because I really don't play when it comes to God. It was like, oh my gosh, Latoya's talking to this prophet, she's blocking my baby blessing, you know, she's having sex with a pastor, and it's like, no, <laughs> You're a I Delilah. Just, I'm a Delilah. Be careful of Delilah. A Jezebel, I'm all these things. A spirit that uses physical attraction to draw you into close proximity. And I'm just trying to, you know, grow in my spiritual journey because I was going through a divorce and I was just trying to get, you know, closer to God. And he was the perfect person to, you know, help me on that journey, on that journey. for me. Yeah. And he's, he's great. Okay. So, have y'all, you and the pastor ever had a conversation about maybe he liked you or maybe he wanted to take you out on a date or anything of the sort? I got that holy drip. <laughs> I got that holy drip. I got the holy drip. No! But that's what Drew wants me to say so bad. I got the holy drip. Let's just keep it 100. He's attracted to your holy drip? He's not attracted to my holy drip because we did not have <laughs> that experience together. I'm giving that to somebody else no, at the moment. No, no, no I'm but asking. But the pastor did, did he not... want to experience your holy drip? No, I don't think he wanted to experience that. We did not get to that level, okay? okay? okay. It was all professional. It was all about God and spirituality. Okay. So all this ish that Jew's trying to bring up to tarnish my brand, to tarnish my character, is a lie. Got it. How did you feel about Drew saying that you were blocking her blessings? I just don't feel like I was blocking <laughs> anything. You know, he has a business on the side where he advises pe people spiritually. Mm -hmm. He advised me. So how does that have anything to do with what you have going on? How does that affect a baby blessing? I don't understand that. I, I understand don't understand myself. Me, you know, being advised by a prophet has anything to do with what you have going on with mm -hmm. the baby blessing. So I was so confused. I feel like anything that I'm involved with that's attached to Drew, she just wants to like, you know, tarnish it. Okay, and... that's a very good question too. Do you feel that some people may say you're coming for Drew because she has a peach and you were trying to come take her spot? Do you feel it's yeah. that kind of that kind of thing with you too? Well. Yeah, go ahead. I mean, you can you can speak on this. I kind of yeah. feel like I have my own answer to the question that Don Juan in the back just came out with. But no, but okay. So the question is basically because Drew had a peach coming into that this she season, begged for. Okay. Why you say she begged for? I mean, she's been trying to get a peach since 2015. I just moved to Atlanta and got a peach a year after. Well, not a peach, but I was you. on the show. A year after. Well, I think I think it's important for people to understand that um, they were having actual conversations with you about being a housewife, right? But because of your My husband not, not wanting, wanting to, to sign off on the children is why I don't have a peach currently, right? Yeah. Well, I have he the took juiciest away your, possi peach. your right. possibilities. I have yeah. the juiciest peach. It's juicier than Drew's. Which oh is my! Why Ralph is in Tampa <laughs> looking for peaches as we speak. I cannot so tell you. me nothing. Okay. So okay. So I just wanted to clear that up for anybody who think that you were coming for her because you was trying to take her peach. Not at all. Like, I'm not trying to take anybody's peach. In fact, I was supposed to have one, as you said. Mm -hmm. But people out here in the family like to block blessings. Okay. <laughs> but don't worry. I'm the juiciest peach of them all. Sorry, Candy. Okay, so, anyway, girl. Anyway, <laughs> but no, I just want to say, look, let's be clear. Like, nobody determines who gets a peach or who doesn't. They right. only have conversations with people. And you see as your story plays out if they decide to make you a peach holder. But they will let you know if they are considering you. And they were considering you. Right. It's just the situation that happened with... Behind the scenes. Because behind the scenes, her husband wouldn't sign off. Right. So. So that's not my fault. Yeah, but that I'm wasn't your fault. still the juiciest peach in the... What is it called? The... It starts with the C. Juiciest peach in, in the, the orchid. orchid. Yeah! That's what it is! <laughs> the juiciest peach 
in the orchid. Hey. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Everyone's going to think that I'm crazy and they're going to hate me all over again. That is hilarious. Okay, so let's roll this back. Okay, so you almost had multiple fights with Drew, actually. I'm separating. You can do what you want while you're separated. She tried to jump on you in this finale. And then it was the time in, you know, when we were on vacation. So when she was gonna, yeah, she was going to try to fight you. Talk about your struggling husband. The last bitch that grabbed me found her head rammed in a and damn just, gate. I'm All right. Well, Drew said that you touched her. Did you say you touched her in South Carolina? So... First of all, Drew said that I don't care about husbands. Don't listen to her, she don't care about husbands. I remember in South Carolina or whatever, I think because you you did her like this, right? Yeah. I think you you know, yeah, because you know how some people talking to Handy and I think you had grabbed her. I'm very her arm. handsy. Yeah, you're I'm very, a very handsy. handsy person. So she was upset because you grabbed her arm, I think, when you were talking yeah, to her. Yeah, and she turned Chirac on me. Yeah, that yeah. was the first one. And then then and the finale, you threw the wig. Right. So that was what made her so, get shot town on you. Yeah, Chirac <laughs> on me. Oh, that's why but you call it Chirac. Like, it's crazy because <laughs> I have more fans and more people in Chicago than she will ever have. So it's like, stop trying to rep a city that doesn't even claim you, okay? Stop. Just stop it. Stop. So, how do you feel about, oh, and Fallon wanted to fight you at her house. No, she leaving, she leaving, Fallon. Oh, she threatened me with a golf club and threatened to kill my whole family. Okay. <laughs> yeah, Which is why because you disrespect her in her house. But I feel like she invited me in and I was complimenting her. This is what dating a 65 year old does. Yes! Put me on, hunty! I'm trying to live like this! Oh, this is what, you know... That was Mary, not a compliment! It's a compliment! This it is was what marrying a 65-year-old man can get you! Oh, that was shit. not a compliment! You better get that bag! She done fumbled the bag because they're not together anymore! That wasn't a compliment! Oh. Okay, we can talk much about the episode, but like, we did not. So, overall, you were not going to come to the party at Cynthia's house. Why not? So let's roll back. Why didn't you come to my tasting at Blaze when I invited all the other girls? Because this is why I really want to know, because you told me you were sick, but Drew said it was because you was trying to hang out with Pastor Okay, Lyon. I didn't come because I have three children, first of all, mm -hmm. and Aya wasn't feeling well, and she gave me a stomach bug. Okay. Okay, that's the reason. Okay, so let's fast forward to the party at Cynthia's house for the finale. Why weren't you going to come? I felt like at the time, there was just so much drama around my name, around Drew, around, you know, Kenya mm -hmm. and our relationship. And I just didn't want to be involved in all the drama. So I was like, let me just stay home because I don't want to be involved. Even though you have been through it the whole season, you're just going to just back out yeah, at the end? Yeah, yeah. 100%. I did get a gift. I got a Gucci bag. You did. A thousand dollar Gucci bag. You did. Where is it at? Because I did not get a Kenya gift took myself. It. She took it? She took the gift. <laughs> she you took, didn't see her take it. She took my gift? She took your gift because they gave her that wig. Oh yeah, like, she did uh -uh. take my gift. Yeah. She did tell me to come get it. Y'all also took the champagne bottles, remember? I took the champagne. And so those were y'all gifts. I didn't gifts. even drink, drink it at all. Okay, well, those were I'm not gifts. drinking anything from Drew because there might be something in well, it. Well, it really wasn't from Drew. That was a gift she had got to, um, got from Cynthia's sister. So y'all took her gift. So what did Drew get? Her wig back. Okay, that's what she deserves. <laughs> her beauty supply ass costume party wig. How did you feel about the recording? The recording. For me... Let's do the relationship like you know i'm not even gonna lie i like drew and all of that stuff you know even though i love both of y'all but I, I i do like drew but i did not like this situation that was going on between you guys and i definitely did not like this whole recording situation That's so how did like you feel about that a violation of privacy you know when you're having a personal conversation with somebody you don't expect them to record it Mm -hmm. So clearly, her assistant had ulterior motives. Mm -hmm. 
-hmm. to record these conversations mm -hmm. to get, you know, receipts for mm -hmm. Drew. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what's the point? Even the assistant called me. He had his iPad on the other line. I knew it because he pressed record and I heard the record noise. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, bruh, are you trying to record me right now? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're trying to have a real conversation, let's have a real convo. Mm -hmm. You know, don't try to record me yeah. to report back to your master. You know, <laughs> like, get out of here with that shit. That it's tacky to me. Sucks. And then Drew playing it as if she's really trying to and that was expose the, somebody. Like, that, you're not exposing anybody. That was a crazy part. What did he say? <laughs> Because I've been there, I met my three-year-old's mom while I was still technically married. He didn't say anything that was like... He likes me, I'm an awesome person. That's what and he you said. And you take that into like, <laughs> oh, y'all are sleeping together, y'all are like having this whole relationship, and I'm breaking up families and marriages, and it's crazy to me. Yeah, that was kind of It's tough, insane. Like, and we all were looking at her like... Yeah, like, what are you really trying to do here? What are you trying to prove? What are you trying to get to? And even if the pastor and I did have something going on, why is that your concern? Worry about your own marriage. Worry about what's going on in Tampa, all right? Worry about that. Stay out of Latoya's life. First of all, Drew said that I don't care about husbands. Okay. And it it's odd to me because I feel like, you know, you're straddling a male stripper on a coffee table. <laughs> where did Bolo sleep? I have no idea where Bolo slept all night. You got your ass all out, half naked on a coffee table. Then it was some more stuff. Come on, bro! I found myself face down on a coffee table. Married, and I don't care about husbands, I was respectful. Who do you feel connected to on the show like? You know, if things happen, God willing, and everybody come back or whatever, who do you feel like that you still, you know, are cool with or can have a connection with going forward? I'm really cool with Kenya. Kenya and I have a really good relationship. You know, I feel like I could go to Kenya whenever, you know, I'm in like a crisis. Mm -hmm. You know, she's mm -hmm. a good friend to me. And we speak, you know, almost every week. So Oh, you do? Yeah. Still? We have, yeah, still. That's good. We have a great connection, a great relationship, and mm -hmm. I look up to her, you know? She's mm -hmm. like a big sister. Oh, so you don't feel connected to me? I mean, I feel connected to you, but you're so busy. Like, you are out here doing <laughs> all these acting gigs. Candy Burris. All of these TV shows. Whatever, child. And you don't have time for me. Oh, I reach out to Candy all the time. Let's meet up. I want to nah, take you, you out. Do it. Every blue moon you do that. But like, do you ever reach me? out to me though? No, I'm just saying. No. <laughs> because after you had stood me up all those couple times, I was just like, twice. You know that was more than twice. But my thing was, I was like, okay, girl, you clearly just just have no regards for me in my time. But me. before that, was I was trying to be a friend to you. You didn't ask me to go nowhere. I always ask you to go out and hang out. Let's do something. Let's get the kids together. What? And it's like Todd and my ex-husband have more connection than we do. Ex, former oh, former yeah, spouse. Yeah. 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 <laughs> oh, I know. It's a lot of women on the show. Oh. Okay. And that's kind of unfortunate. That is true. Mm -hmm. Which we can talk about this. So Todd, we introduced Adam yeah, and we Todd. Did. Yeah. At the beginning of the season, we had introduced the two of them, and they actually became cool. Yeah. And now they actually still hang out together, yeah. which you don't seem to care for. What? <laughs> I said, which you don't seem it's to care whatever for. whatever to me. So you cool with it. Okay. I mean, I'm okay with it. Mm -hmm. I mean, if they have, like, a genuine connection. Yeah. Like, cool. Why would I ever try to come between that? Well, no, I didn't say you was trying to come yeah. between it. I just was, you know, at first she was like, well, y'all are cool with Adam, and, he, you know, tell Ty that... He knew me first. <laughs> you know what? I, I feel like it's all about loyalty. I technically brought my ex-husband into the situation. Okay. You know? Mm -hmm. And Todd and Adam hit it off. Mm -hmm. And it's like our relationship was kind of like, er, what's going on? Because, you know, we're both busy. We're both working moms. Mm -hmm. And our relationship wasn't really solidified. Okay. And I kind of felt... You know, uncomfortable with that. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, you didn't tell me that part. Yeah. But it's well, good I'm to telling know. you now. I'm glad to know. Yeah. I can understand how you feel. I mean, you and I really didn't, um, we really didn't go into it or really talk much about it. But yeah, I mean, I guess we probably should have 
say, hey, let's, you know, go out to dinner so we could, you know, really build our bond and have our conversation right. about how everything was flowing. Right. So I could yeah, do that. Like, to set the record straight, I don't have a problem with Adam being friends with Todd at all. Mm -hmm. It was just our connection mm -hmm. that I was, like, uneasy about because I felt like, okay, well, you know, Todd and Adam are friends. Is Candy trying to distance herself from me because they're so close? No. So that's what was going mm -hmm. through my head. And I said that to you, but then, I mean, I guess if we're not around each other, you probably can, you don't, you hear me saying that, but you don't feel it. Right. So I get it. Right. I understand So that. we need to work on that. Okay. Yeah, we will. Definitely. <laughs> So I, I got to touch on this because obviously you and your marriage has been all in the blogs, which is crazy to me because I feel like if y'all talked about it so much, so much in the blogs, it seemed like you could have talked about it on the show. That's how I feel in my right. personal opinion. But they edited a lot of those scenes out where we discussed what I had going on. It's playing out on social media. It's crazy to me. So that's why I'm just like, y'all could have done all that. We could show. have done it on the show. And it's like, you know, Adam is out there talking about our marriage, our relationship, you know, what we had going on with all these different media outlets. Mm -hmm. And it's like, what is, what is your mindset right now? Okay, so how do you feel now that, okay, you have one side of you that's on reality te television. Right. And then you have the other side of you that you've been sharing to the world for years through yeah. your channels on social media or whatever. Right. Okay, now you and Adam are no longer together, but y'all both sharing y'all lives separately, separate opinions, airing out y'all dirty laundry. Okay, let's just make this clear. What? I did not start sharing about what I went through in my marriage until Adam started to take all these interviews with all of these different social media outlets. I was like, you know what? If he's doing all these interviews, let me just set the record straight on my YouTube channel and then I just exposed everything that happened in our marriage. I was brutally honest, you know? I said things that I did not feel comfortable saying. Mm -hmm. I just wanted people to know the truth with what went on, you know? I just wanted to dead it right there. Okay. Because he was, you know, doing all these interviews and it's like, you're calling me Clout Toya. That's his new name for me, Clout Toya. Mm -hmm. But yet, you're doing all these interviews about me and I did not say one thing about you. Mm -hmm. How am I looking for Clout? You're using my name and our situation to stay relevant. And that's just the truth. Can we talk about, because I think this was past, but it was brought up, the whole part where when he first started, he was like, well, the marriage ended because you were for the streets. And now wherever y'all got with that back and forth, for the streets, mm. whatever. I don't yeah. even know where it came from. Um, man, she was cheating. I know yeah. that. But you were like, nah, man, I'm cool. I don't want to do this marriage more. You're right. I'm for the streets. Right. Well, you had talked about that actually on the show. They just never aired it. You told me that you basically, he, he had said something to you about that you were for the streets now. <laughs> and you said, yeah, you're right. I'm for the streets. You yeah. said it on camera, but they never showed that. Right. Yeah. Okay, so Adam said that I'm for the streets, okay, mm -hmm. in, you know, a conversation that we had because, you know, I did step out on the marriage. Okay. Um, he's forgiven me. We moved past that, but it's something that he continuously holds over my head. Okay. Now, he's for the streets too, okay? He was cheating on you too? There are receipts out there that he was trying to take a woman to Cabo while I was pregnant with my last child. There are receipts. Well, he said you was, had a private eye on him and you never found him. Say what? He said you had a private eye trying to get stuff on him and you never found him. I did put a tracker on his car. But I did see text messages of him trying to take one of his girls to Cabo. And okay. this is a girl that I actually... Okay, so a few years ago... I caught Adam texting a girl inappropriately and I saved her number in my phone. Mm -hmm. And in 2019, when I got pregnant with Aya, I saw text messages from a number mm -hmm. and something told me to put the number in my phone. So I did and I saw that it was the same girl. Mm -hmm. So you're trying to take this girl that you've been seeing to Cabo mm. while I'm pregnant. Mm. You let me know. 
Mm. Is that cheating? Sounds like cheating. Okay. Okay. So I really wanted to know, I mean, and I got to ask, Vaughn, you're here. So I'm going to have to ask you straight up, like, why y'all sitting here? How did you feel about the receipts that Adam, you know, was basically, basically is trying to say Fake about receipts? Vaughn? Fake receipts. As I said before, like, first of all, Vaughn, he trained Jeffree Star. Okay. Okay. He's in the limelight. Okay, he mm -hmm. is, you know, in the LGBTQ community. Mm -hmm. Vaughn trains many gay people. He mm -hmm. also has many gay friends. What's the problem with that? I don't it's understand. No There's no problem with that. Mm -hmm. So why is Adam making that an issue? Why is he making it seem like the guy that I'm speaking to is gay? And even if he had a gay history, okay, so what? That's something that I have to deal with. Not mm -hmm. you or anybody else. Mm -hmm. And in fact, I would be okay with because Vaughn and I have an amazing connection. So it's like, why is he so concerned with the men that I have in my life? Because you're his ex-wife. <laughs> I don't care like, what he, I don't care why? what he has going on in his life. I don't question you, I don't ask you. It's all about the kids. Whenever I message you, it's all about the kids. He wants to message me about Vaughn, about this, about that. It's none okay. of your business. We're not in a relationship anymore. So whatever is in the media about Vaughn is false. Mm -hmm. He did train Jeffree Star, that is true. Mm -hmm. Is he gay? No. Mm -hmm. I get it every single night. Mm -hmm. All right, and his ass is hairy as fuck. What gay man would want to be a hairy ass? I'm just saying. <laughs> uh, I don't know. <laughs> it's, I'm gonna have to, I'm gonna have to it's run like a poll. It's it. like Drew's literally. wig between ass cheeks, okay? <laughs> <laughs> like literally. Okay, so and here's another. It's like hard to find the hole, you know. Right. So that yeah. was the question. <laughs> that was the. That was. Who the question. wants to be stressed out about that? Like okay, for real, just I, on to the next victim. That was a question that Adam asked, but this is a question me as your homegirl. I'm gonna mm -hmm. ask you because you know I'm gonna say this, and I said anybody. You and mine have not been dating that long. But we're beasties. We got tatted the other day. Because we're getting it right here. Yeah. So when we hold hands, it'll say like, beastie, beastie. That's gonna be lit, man, come on. I know, you yeah. just told me that. And mom, this is nothing against you. This is me saying, me from a woman's standpoint. Normally, people in the first six to eight months are showing their representative. What's what up, up LaVanya Gang? Gang? Ha! Do you know that this is the one to go as far as to start your YouTube channel together, yeah. to introduce your families together, yeah. um, you know, so on and so forth. This is your first time dating out seriously outside of being married. You know, correct? Yes. In your adult life. I'm yes, saying. in my adult life after marriage. I feel like Vaughn and I have an amazing connection. Mm -hmm. I feel like we're friends first. Mm -hmm. You know, we're like best friends. Yeah, it happened rather quickly, but mm -hmm. I feel like the connection is so genuine, it's so organic, it's not forced. Mm -hmm. I don't have to try to be something that I'm not. I can be my authentic self mm -hmm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. And I think that it's a beautiful thing. He vibes with my kids, mm -hmm. he vibes with my family, and you know, I'm just excited for what the future holds, honestly. Well, that is awesome, and I'm glad yeah. to hear it, honey. And you guys can continue to watch the development of their relationship because yeah. they got a whole YouTube channel together and we're going to drop that link, follow the channel and follow what goes on yeah. because this girl right here, <laughs> when I tell you, she's going <laughs> to take your life on a whole roller coaster, it's a roller coaster. following yeah. everything that she guys go has going on. Yeah. Okay, so I went all off the rails to touch on those things that people saw on social media, but I got to end it with bringing it back to the show. Yes. Overall, how do you feel about being on the show and, and how the fans have received you? I feel like at first they felt like I was a mean girl. Mm -hmm. And I feel like they're only getting one perspective of me and my character, you know? Mm -hmm. They see me as a friend. I'm not main cast. Mm -hmm. So they don't get to see me as a mom. They don't get to see me in a relationship. They don't get to see me as a businesswoman, you know, a mom boss. They don't get to see that. Mm -hmm. They only get to see the dynamic with me with the women. And so I feel like since they only got one side of me, that was the only thing that they had to judge. And so 
I kind of got flack for it in the beginning, mm-hmm. but as time progressed, mm-hmm. I feel like people have warmed up to me mm-hmm. because they know all the toys just you know crazy, you know mm-hmm. she's that crazy Trinidadian Caribbean girl with no filter, like <laughs> she's funny, you know she's off the wall, mm-hmm. and so I feel like with me people. You love me or you hate me. Mm-hmm. Or you grow to love me, mm-hmm. you know? That's true. Yeah, you're going to love me. Mm-hmm. And I feel like that's where everybody's at right now. Well, that's a good thing. Yeah. <laughs> because at first, I was like, oh, Lord Jesus. Yeah, everyone was attacking me. I was like, Tess and Candy, like, Candy, everybody But what did I tell you? You tr- you trended every single Sunday. Every so single. regardless of if it was bad or good, yeah. people were talking about you. For sure. So, yeah. Take it how you want to take right. it. You know what I mean? It is what it is. Yeah. You were somebody to be talked about. Right. That's they were like, girl, you were carrying the season, okay? If it wasn't for you, like, what <laughs> you was, okay. like, let me take some credit for some episodes, bringing all the hot tea, all the hot drama, talking about wigs and people's marriages and alimony and stuff. Was there anything that you didn't get off your chest while you was on the show? No. I you feel like everything. I, <laughs> I get everything out in one setting. You'll know everything and how I feel. Exactly. So I ask all the ladies this every what? time somebody comes on the show. I want your opinion on each woman on the show. Okay. Okay, what is your opinion of Cynthia? I think that Cynthia is a great friend. She's a person that I would look to for advice but i feel like she would carry my business to the other ladies because she's done it to me before yeah okay she gives great advice but just know that it will be exposed got it yeah okay (laughs) but i love her marlo i love marlo we have the same birthday Mm -hmm. we're both aquarius she's a great time Mm -hmm. she loves her cocktails (laughs) so you know we can vibe over there with Mm -hmm. a little cocktail at the bar Mm -hmm. i love marlo she's a great person and we speak often shout out to marlo kenya i love kenya i we have a great connection as i said before i have a great connection with brooklyn yeah kenya and i are friends okay portia i feel like Portia and I didn't have, you know, enough time to get to know each other. Mm -hmm. So she's cool. Like, I feel like we could connect over drinks. Mm -hmm. But I don't know if, like, a friendship would ever evolve. I'm Mm -hmm. not sure. Because we never had that opportunity to really, you know, connect on that level. Drew. Who? (laughs) Drew who? I had to ask because I gotta ask each person to give you a chance to say something. Well, you've already been talking about it. Drew is who? Who is that? Okay. Fallon. Fallon, she's a beautiful girl. Okay. Shamia. Oh my god. So Shamia's awesome. Off camera. (laughs) But on camera, she's like Portia's pit bull. What? You know, she'll like attack you, but like off camera, she's like the sweetest, most genuine person. Like I love Shamia off camera, but on camera, it's just like I don't know. Oh. I I back up when it comes to Shamia because she's aggressive on camera. <laughs> okay, can me. You, can you say that? Can you I can say, say what you want to say. Yeah. Yeah. Me. Candy, you're awesome. You're oh, such a you. supportive friend. Thank and you. I'm so happy that we met. Like, when I first moved to Atlanta in 2018, mm-hmm. Candy is one of the first people that I've met. And I was so shocked that she was just such an amazing person. Well, I was, thank you. She's talking about me like I'm not sitting here, but it's okay. Yeah, you are great, you know? You're so supportive. You know, whenever I need to talk about something, you're always there for me. You're good. You're great. Well, thank you. I love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, too. Give me a hi. I had so much fun talking to you you today. I mean, like, seriously. I mean, we do have to do this more often. We do. So invite me more often Mm -hmm. and don't tell me no. Okay. Although I did, you know. Uh, and we're over it. We're over it. You were here on time today. You got here before me. Listen, I was an hour early. What? That's crazy. Anyway, y'all, I really hope that um, you guys follow Latoya forever. What do you have that you want everybody to know about right now? What does she do again? Listen, just follow my YouTube channel. Hey, hunties and hunkles. It's your girl Latoya forever. I'm a social media influencer. You guys can go to youtube.com slash Latoya forever. She's a YouTube channel.
I also have a couples channel with my boyfriend, Vaughn, which is youtube.com slash LaVanya Gang. Is that like a job, having a YouTube channel? Okay. LaVanya. Yes, I also have a kids clothing line called Alley Kids Apparel. Okay. I have a lot going on in life. Mm -hmm. I'm a busy mom of three. Follow me. <laughs> you heard what she said. We're putting all the links so you can follow her. Yes. Well, make sure you subscribe, like, comment, share, and thank you for watching. Speak on it! <laughs> I had already heard. I can turn a shade tree into a money tree. Did you call Kenya Kenny? I call her Kenny sometimes. Yeah. I call Kenny Kenny sometimes. Did you call her Kenny when y'all was hanging out with no cameras by yourself? Yeah. That's, that's, that's my Kenny. She has a little nickname. <laughs> <laughs>